This is an early access survival game called The Infected. And this is my review and probably the only up-to-date review on this game. What appealed to me about this game is that there's electricity, there's an AI helper called Mike, and the developers actually listen to your suggestions and put them in the game. The game doesn't have a story as of yet, but the premise is pretty clear. Something terrible has happened, turning everyone into vambies except you. You're left to survive on an island, however this island has roads and towns that you can use for travel and resources. The graphics are extremely impressive, especially since it's early access and there's only one person developing this whole game as of right now. While some of the assets are only stock assets right now, they will all be updated to custom assets in the future. And some of the assets that need updating, like the Vambies, are currently being drawn and updated right now and will be out in the next major update. This game has sunsets and sunrises, which means you will see the day get darker and darker as time goes on. And in the morning, you will see the day get brighter and brighter as the sun rises. This game also has cloudy days, rain, storms, and winter. And during winter, it has snow and blizzards. However, if the graphics are too much for your computer, you can always turn down the settings or change them. It's very easy to do. If you're a beginner, I would suggest turning off foliage just so you can find things like sticks, rocks, and plants easier. There are also caves in this game, and you really can't go in one without some sort of light source. They've really just done a great job with the graphics in this game, especially being early access and with very few developers. Now the sound design for the most part is very accurate. There are some things here and there, but like I said, for the most part, it's very accurate. And what I mean by that is when you hear a storm, it really sounds like there's a storm happening. Just take a listen. Even simple things like your footstep or the noise you make when you throw a spear. There are just so many simple things as well in the sound design of this game that just make it so good. And like I mentioned, there are some sounds that are a bit iffy. Like for example, when a raccoon runs, it kind of sounds like a horse. Personally, I've never heard a raccoon run in person, so I don't know. But yes, it does sound like a horse. And the stabbing sound for attacking enemies or animals could also be improved as well. But overall, the sound design is amazing. I hope in the future they add a soundtrack, just a subtle one. For example, when you enter a cave, there might be some ominous music playing. Because as of right now, they don't have anything for in the game. They only have the soundtrack for when you're on the main screen. It would also be really cool if they made just a couple of songs that we could play ourselves in the game by using a stereo or mp3 player. So let's talk about the gameplay mechanics. In this game, there is no easy, medium, or hard difficulty. There is a creative setting if you don't want to have to collect everything and you just want to build a way without worry of dying. When you go to start a new game, this game really encourages you to customize your own experience instead of having a set difficulty. So the first way you can do this is by picking how long each month is, which determines how long each season is. And then you can pick which seasons you want, if you want all four seasons or only summer or only winter. The second way you can do this is by choosing if you want your stats depletion to be slow, normal or fast. And the third way is by choosing if you want your sun resistance to be on or off. The next way you can choose your difficulty is by deciding if you want enemies and predators to be on or off. And if you do want predators to be on, you can also choose how much damage they do to you and how much building damage they do. And same with enemies. You can even pick how much health the enemies and predators have, and you can always go back and change this later if you find it too easy or too difficult. So now you've picked your options and your difficulty and you've loaded into the game. You've spawned somewhere random, what do you do? There is a small tutorial to help you along the way. However, you probably know that you need to go find a place and set up a base. However, you've probably looked at your stats and you probably feel a bit overwhelmed. Well, don't worry. It looks overwhelming right now. However, it's actually very easy to manage. And if you set up where the fish or the crocodiles are by day 10 or 20, you'll have more food than you know what to do with. 
Three things I love about this game is one, there's an AI helper called Mike that you rescue. He's similar to Calvin from the forest, except he needs food, but never needs to take a break. They also have plans to bring in a second AI helper in the future. The next thing I love about this game is it has electricity, which means you can do things like power ceiling lights, power a fridge, power a sink, and most importantly, power mineral extractors, which means you don't have to mine manually by hand the whole game. The last thing I love about this game is that there are transport options. There's a log cart you can use to transport logs, stones, animals, everything. And there's also a truck in the game right now that gets you across the map quickly and allows you to transport animals, even more storage containers, even more stones, even more logs as well. And a player of the game suggested an ATV and they're putting it in the game in the next major update, which is just fantastic that the devs listen to the suggestions of the players. As of right now, the enemies don't have the most advanced move set. The mini boss one is okay, but the rest don't have the most advanced. However, in the next major update, like I keep saying, they will be getting an upgrade to their move set. Now here are some things that make this game different from other survival games. In this game, when winter comes around and all the lakes are frozen, you can actually use the snow to fill up your water bottle instead of having to rely on water collectors like in other games. This game has electricity. I know I've said this already, but it's such a fun feature to have in a game and literally no other games have electricity in them. It's also such an obvious and easy to implement feature. I'm surprised more games don't have it. In most survival games, you have a way to travel and carry a lot of things at the same time. In the forest, you have a log sled and a houseboat. In Velheim, you have a log cart and a longboat. But in the infected, you have a log cart that can carry a lot more than just logs. And a car, more specifically a truck, that can carry even more than the log cart can and travels very quickly across the map. And did I mention you can run over enemies with the truck as well. In most survival games you can improve your stats, usually starting at 0 or 1, moving up to a possible 50 or increasing to a possible 100 as the max stat. However in the infected you start with 100 health, stamina, thirst and sun resistance. And you can make certain foods to increase your health and stamina all the way up to 300 and increase your thirst and sun resistance all the way up to 200. However, if you die, your health will be reduced by 1, which means it could go from 100 to 99 to 98, all the way down to 50 is the lowest. However, right now, this is the only penalty for death. It is a big penalty if you're someone who dies a lot in games. However, you don't lose items or anything for dying. Now, the last thing that makes this game different is the technology that's in it. The technology that's in this game is the thing that you're going to be working towards because not only does it automate watering plants for you, getting ores for you and cutting logs into planks for you, it will help you make more advanced and fun tools and weapons and also help you get Mike, the AI helper. The developer has said that there will not be any multiplayer in this game or co-op if that is a deal breaker for you then this game probably is not for you. However, I would still highly recommend it as it is a really fun single player game to play. This game actually doesn't have too many issues. Especially for an early access game, you'd think there would be a lot more issues and bugs. But the reason why this game doesn't have many issues is because as soon as an issue or a bug is found, the person will post it on the Steam community page or post it on the infected Discord server and it usually gets fixed very quickly depending on what the bug is. My conclusion would have to be, for an early access survival zombie game, it's very enjoyable and fun. It's also a single player game. You have to realize that it's not going to be multiplayer. And if it was, it wouldn't be multiplayer anytime soon. It does a lot different to other games, like for example electricity, cars, and AI like Mike. If they can keep the game grounded while adding a lot more building options and adding on to the things they do different while constantly updating the game, it could be a very big hit in the future. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe. 
and let me know in the comments below do you like the game do you not like the game what could they do to fix it or add to make you want to play the game more and if you think you might like this game please check out my other videos and i'll see you in my next video